Hey guys, it's Miss Pariseau. Um, in case we didn't get to it in class, I wanted to make sure that you were able to review and take a look at what does it look like to write an equation from a word problem. Now, it's going to feel a little bit awkward at first with because we're writing one-step equations, so our natural thing is to just go ahead and start solving them when we're doing this. So I'm going to try and show you these different steps um, that come into play when writing an equation from a word problem. This is, again, we're building the foundation for when we get into two-step equations and multi-step equations. All right. So our main parts are that the first thing we want to do is identify the variable, which is our unknown, and what we're using it to represent. We're going to make an equation. We're going to go ahead and solve that equation. And then finally, we're going to make sure that we take our answer and put it in a complete sentence to make sure that our answer makes sense and that we've actually, in fact, answered the question within the problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first one. Right? The morning temperature was negative 7 degrees Fahrenheit. Later this afternoon, it was 31 degrees Fahrenheit. How many degrees did the temperature increase from morning until afternoon? So we're looking for, right here, it says how many degrees did it increase? So we know that it started at negative 7, and the end result was 31. So we're basically looking for, well, we went, it went up, so we're looking for, well, what did it go up by? So we don't know, and I'm going to use D for degrees. I'm not going to use T because it looks too much like a plus sign. So D for, and we're going to say that it's going to represent the degrees it increased. Okay, because that's what the question is. The question is usually your variable. All right, so now that we have our variable, we're going to go ahead and write an equation. Well, we kind of build from what we already know. It started, the temperature started at negative 7. We want to know how much it increased. Well, increase means to add. So what number was added to it, what temperature was added to it, to give us a result of 31? So that's how you would build your equation, right? And now we're going to go ahead and just rewrite the equation and show our math work for solving it. Don't forget your railroad tracks and you're going to do the opposite operation. Our goal is to get the variable by itself. So instead of a negative 7, I will do a positive 7 again because it's like saying subtracting 7, so I'm going to add. I'm not really doing an opposite sign. It's, it still is the opposite operation. Okay. All right. Shows that that cancels out and that I get D equals 38. Well, we want to take that number and what this means and answer our question. Go back to your question. It said, how many degrees did the temperature increase? And we said that D was going to represent the, the degrees increased. So we're just going to basically translate the meaning of this right here. So the temperature increased by 38 degrees. Okay, so those are the different components for writing and solving a one-step equation with your word problems. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the second problem. Cameron earns $19 per hour. That's a key phrase. If she made $228 in a weekend, how many hours did she referee soccer games? So those are all some key phrases there. So I see that she makes 19, per means multiply, hour. I don't know how many hours she worked. And look at that. That's my unknown. How many hours? But I know that she made a total equals 228. So those key phrases actually help me to build my equation and find my variable. So my unknown is right here. That's what I'm trying to find out. So I'm going to use H to represent the number of hours refereed, that she did refereeing, refereed, okay? And you can see from my word problem, I've already started working out. So my equation is going to be $19 per hour, and she gets a total of 228. The end result was that. So now we'll go ahead and let's solve our equation. 
railroad tracks. Since I'm multiplying, I'm going to divide both sides by 19. Now, remember, we want to do our messy math off to the side. I know I cannot do that division in my head. That is not my strong suit. 19 goes into 22 one time. Subtract, I get 3, bring down the 8. 19 goes into 38 twice. Zero remainder, so I know I'm done. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so H equals 12. Well, what did H stand for? If we go back up to our key, our H stood for the number of hours refereed, and that answers my question. How many hours did she referee soccer games? So, she, or you can write Cameron, refereed 12 hours. Go to the next one here. If you ever want to, go ahead and try and pause the video and see if you can set it up and, and see how you do before you go ahead and go through the process to kind of test yourself. Right? Jacob earned $62.58 during an entire day. That is a key phrase. That's a total amount. That's an end result right there. If he made $17.35 before lunch, how much did he make after lunch? So we can see that we're, we're breaking it up into two parts. So we want to know how much money he made after lunch. I'm going to use M for money, and it's going to represent the money after lunch. So if you're struggling to figure out how to build your equation here, well, let's think about what we did. Well, he made money before lunch, and he made money after lunch, which gave him a total of $62.58. So, well, what was the number for before? $17.35. Do we know how much money he made after? No, that's our variable, M, and that's what helps us figure it out. So sometimes we can put in words to help us build our equation. Okay, go ahead and pause the video real quick and see if you can set up and solve. All right, let's see how you did. There's your equation. We had to subtract 1735 from both sides. I did my messy math off to the side down here, and I got that it was 45.23, 45 to 23 hundredths. Well, again, we want to interpret the meaning of that number. How, many, how much money did he make after lunch? Jacob earned $45.23 after lunch. So always put it back into a complete sentence. All right, go ahead and pause the video to see if you can build your equation on your own. All right, there are your key phrases. An unknown number is divided by 16 so that each receive 14. So that kind of builds it. We don't know how many M&Ms were divided. So M divided by 16 equals 14. Now, it's okay if you wrote it this way, but a more acceptable way and like a typical way of writing it is in this format, is in the fraction format, right? So that means that when we go ahead and go to solve it, we would like to do it this way because when we do our inverse operations, it helps us to show our work a little bit better. So it shows us that we're really multiplying by a reciprocal here, by 16, so that they cancel out. And 16 over 1 is just 16. So M equals, again, if you can't do the math in your head, that is totally fine, but just do your messy math off to the side. Okay, I get 224. And that seems to make sense. I mean, if I only got like 20 M&Ms or something like that, um, it doesn't make sense that 20 divided by 16 would be 14. And the same thing's true too, if I got 2,000, that would make sense as well. If I only got 14 M&Ms, feel a little gypped there. So what does this mean? Answer the question, how many M&Ms were being divided? 224 M&Ms were divided among the students. Right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the back. 
All right. We're going to wrap it up. I'm going to, you're going to be left to do a couple of these on your own for Monday to show me that you made an attempt at trying to build these on your own. I will do, go ahead and do number five for you because it is a little bit of a trickier one, um, only because we have a fraction here. Okay, so three-fourths of the apps on Haley's phone were free. If she has 28 free apps on her phone, how many apps does she have total? So this is a little tricky. So we see three-fourths of means times. Remember that key phrase? The apps means that's out of all of her apps. So when I do three-fourths times whatever she has, I will get how many free ones she has. So we know that she has 28 free. So I don't know how many apps total she has. So I'm going to say A equals total apps on her phone. So my equation is 3 fourths of them will be 28. Now remember, what do you have to do when you are solving an equation that has a fraction being multiplied by the variable. Go ahead and pause and see if you can figure out the answer. Okay, so yikes, this one, I didn't, I didn't catch it. I keep forgetting, every year I forget to change this number to be a nice, easy number. But um, it's a good learning thing to, to still understand how to interpret our answer. Remember when you're multiplying by a fraction, you want to un, undo it, or inverse, by multiplying by the reciprocal so that they cancel out. So we multiply by 4 thirds over on this side. Well, here I did all my messy math. 28 over 1 times 4 thirds. Remember, you have to always take that whole number and make it improper. Multiply straight across. I get 112 over 3. Well, again, I can't do that math in my head. So I did the math. And it didn't go in nice and evenly. So she has 37 and 1 third apps on her phone. Well, I don't think you can have part of an app on your phone. So for this case only because it's not very pretty. We're just going to interpret it, and we're going to say that Haley has about 37 apps on her phone. So it's roughly 30, 37. I'm going to make a note to myself next year to just turn that to a 27 to make our lives a little bit easier there. Okay, all right, the last three are about using what you know for translating to help you build your equation. Okay, so this will be the last one that I do for you, and I'd like you to try seven and eight on your own. All right, so we have six less than a number is negative 42. What is the number? Well, make that, your, that's your variable. I'm trying to figure out what the number is. So x is my number. You can use whatever variable you want. Okay, write an equation. Well, let's translate it. 6 less than, remember, is a turnaround phrase. A number is, means equals, negative 42. So, I'm going to rewrite this. Remember, it's not 6 minus x because it's 6 less than a number. So, I'm going to write my equation as x minus 6 is negative 42. So, I've got my equation. Now I can go ahead and solve it. Equals negative 42, so that means I'm going to add 6 to both sides. Those cancel out. X equals, I have a negative 42 plus 6. They are opposite signs, so remember your integer rules. Same signs, add and keep, opposite, subtract. 42 minus 6 is 36. The number further from 0 is negative 42, so it's a negative 36. Not much for putting it into a sentence here. You just have to tell me that the number is negative 36. And that's it. So what I'd like you to do is to go ahead and try numbers 7 and 8 on your own so that way we can pick up on Monday or whenever we happen to return and meet um, and discuss them from there. Thanks guys for cooperating. See you then.